control, let's go with another flow. Ain't your average entertainment show More than entertainment than what's on the screen Connecting dots on what you see Have you ever wondered how it all began? The idea, how they started the plan XX actors, the whole team Mad props to those behind the scene Why did the person get into the biz? Something inside when they were a kid Who helped them out when they wanted to quit? What about the fam that gave them rocks to kick? How all the haters, they left shaming alone Find out in the Entertainment zone with Paul Amadeus Lane. It's a real thing. Intro, let's go with another flow. Ain't your average entertainment show. More than entertainment than what's on the screen. Connecting dots on what you see. Hello and welcome to the Entertainment Zone here on ABC News Radio KMET. We also welcome in our friends from Hollywood News Source. It's our Comic Con recap in particular we're going to talk about being there at the entertainment weekly comic-con bash 2019 we were there it was fantastic we had an awesome time i'm going to share with you some of the uh, celebrities that i ran into and just some of the topics that we talked about in just a moment but before we start i would like to personally thank entertainment weekly slate pr for allowing me, a disabled journalist, confined to a wheelchair, to be a part of the red carpet. They made sure I was comfortable. We had enough room for all the other cameras and journalists there. Uh, We had a blast uh, just being a part of this event. And it really shows how Entertainment Weekly and Slate PR uh, really do believe in diversity and inclusion by allowing me, me to be a part of that, um, the red carpet, and it was, it was outstanding. So I really appreciate all that they did. All right, enough with all the mushy stuff. Why don't we check out all the cool people I ran into that night at Entertainment Weekly's Comic Con Bash 2019. My Comic Con has been crazy. It's Preacher's last season. We finished shooting two weeks ago, and now we're here at Comic Con. We did our last Hall H last night at 7 o'clock, and it's, um, I, it's been a big mix of emotions while we run as fast as we can to get all the press in and see everybody. And what's been your most memorable Comic Con experience over the years? I had this season for the first time, my last com- Comic Con. My character was new, and this season there were people cosplaying as me. Um, oh my God, I'm going to cry about it. I, I don't even know how to process that. I'm so honored that someone would take the time to, I don't know, appreciate my character and go to those lengths, and it's, uh, I, it means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. That's when you know you made it in cosplaying, when people start cosplaying you, right? Yeah, I haven't processed to that point yet. I'm just like, every time I see somebody, I'm like, props, man, I'll hail the grail right on. Yeah, so it's been um, it's been a crazy, wild ride. You're looking sharp, man. Thank you. Um, I knew I'd be bumping into yourself. And since I'm joining the Star Trek family, I had to make sure I came correct, you know? So I got a little, I got a little tailor-made suit. You know, my own little interior, initials inside, you know how we do. ABC News, KMET, this is David Ajala, sharing love. Star Trek, baby. It's about to get very real. Watch season three. I love that. Which is pretty cool. How's your con going? My con's going amazing. Yeah, we're having good. This is our fourth year here. I can believe that, which is so crazy. So to get to come back for four years in a row is pretty awesome. Talk about the, the fan experience and able to interact with your fans here at Comic Con. Oh, God, the fans are awesome. I mean, it's just so nice. They follow us. We do cons all over the world, and they show up here. They always show up no matter where we are. And we're so grateful. We wouldn't have had our show come back if it wasn't for our fans. So we owe them everything, and we just want to make them proud. If you were able to cosplay as anything, what would you cosplay as? I would cosplay as Sailor Jupiter or David Bowie from The Labyrinth. You remember that? Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite movies. I can quote, like, the whole thing. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love that movie. That is so cool. Well, hey, keep up the great work and take care, my dear. Nice to see you again. Yeah. You take care. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time when you were Emotep. Oh, my God. You're bringing one out from the past, baby. That's like 15, 
16 years ago. Yeah, thank you. That, that was my favorite Stargate. When you were fighting Tilk and you said, I am kneel, for, kneel to your God or something. I was you know the words. Man, I, I saw Chris Judge uh, up in Vancouver probably less than a year ago. And every time I see him, man, it bring, you know, he just makes you smile. You know, He's a good brother and he's talented and smart. And he told me, he, he chose me for the role. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> How's your Comic-Con going? So far, it's going great. I flew in last night, uh, and we're in Vancouver shooting on The Magicians, and, and I, I got in 11.30 p.m. last night in San Diego, and happy to be here. I got some rest, I got up, you know, showered, shaved, you know, so ready, ready to rock. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's like, I want people to have fun, you know. You know, and the only way to do that is if I have fun. So, you know, I, I, I want to make sure I'm having fun, too. So, yeah. How do you enjoy your Comic-Con as a fan? Um, what I do is I try to I try to plan one day where I can walk the floor. And so, for me, that's tomorrow. And I'll be buying some Black Panther gear. Um, I bought a beautiful Black Panther uh, jacket here last year. And it took them six months for it to arrive, but it finally arrived, like right after Christmas. And I'll be wearing that tomorrow. Um, I have the Black Panther uh, beads, um, and also I'm a huge Batman fanatic too. So I'm looking for like Funko Pop stuff and whatever I can find, T-shirts. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big nerd. I really, I'm a 52-year-old nerd. And I'm proud of it. So <laughs> cosplay as anything else. Um, you know what? I would love to do. I would love to try to do Darth Vader from um, Empire Strikes Back. I'm, I'm sorry, Return of the Jedi. Uh, but like, as he's getting, as he's dying, and when his mask is pulled off, and you see half of his face, and it's like you know, it's all electronic components and everything's messed up. And then maybe he's got a lightsaber that flickers on and off, you know, you know. But like, I want, I would love to walk around like that. <laughs> you know, I thought you were gonna say emo tap. Emo tap, emo tap. Yeah. You want me to say it? Yeah. Oh. I am emo chap. I love it. Enjoy the rest of your car, brother. Oh, thank you, brother. God bless. Thank All right, you so take much. care. You got the best smile in the world. <laughs> thank you. So, Lauren from Scare Tactics to Superstore, talk about the journey, my dear. Listen, I did Scare Tactics 10 years ago. It's the craziest thing that I have ever done or I'm sure will ever do. It's amazing, it's been re-released on Netflix. They're uncensored. I saw my own butt crack in an episode which I was not expecting to see. Um, but it's amazing because people are just finding it now and they're like, are you shooting this now? And I'm like, no, it was literally 10 years ago. I was a baby. I look so young in those those bits. Um, but it's been a long road, you know? I, I did that show and then I came out here, I did a show called Super Fun Night on ABC, which was amazing. We only did one season, unfortunately. I did a show called Another Period on Comedy Central, and now I'm on Superstar going into season five. So people are like, overnight success, and I'm like, maybe more like a 12-year overnight success. You know what I mean? So how does Lauren enjoy Comic-Con as a fan? I'm the hugest Supernatural fan there is. I'm going to the panel tomorrow morning. I'm going to wait in line. Two years ago at this party that we're at right now, I saw Misha Collins at the bar. I sputtered at him and then just raised, shaking hand, just raised my phone for a selfie and took a very shaky, blurry photo. It was horrifying, but it, I, I am a true Supernatural fangirl. You know, and that's one thing we all forget that stars are fans too. 100%, absolutely. And you know, there's been times when I've had, I've met people that are big fans of mine, which is so amazing, and they start apologizing, I'm so sorry, and I, and I every time I say, don't worry, I fool, made a fool of myself in front of Misha Collins, I completely understand what you're going through, so it's nice. So if you can cosplay as anything, who you cosplay as? I play a character on a cartoon called She-Ra and the Princesses of Power called Scorpia, and it would have to be her, because I feel like she is so uh, special to me that I would love to embody her in a cosplay. Awesome, you look stunning. What are you wearing? This is from ASOS. A-S-O-S is the name of the brand. And then I've got these like ridiculous heels from Ruthie Davis. It's too much, but you gotta, gotta keep it real. When you wear khakis and a polo on television for a living, when you come to events, you gotta kick it up, you know? A lot of people here, my God. So many people outside. It, it's exciting, you know, that people love um, this make-believe world so much that they're dressing up as the characters. It, it's nice to be a kid again, you know, because you see all these grown-ups, they're 40, 50, 60, dressed up as superheroes. You're like, what? But it's nice to be a kid, you know, especially in this world that uh, we have a lot of um, instability, politically speaking, and a lot of violations of human rights in this country and abroad. So to be able to just forget about that for a second and play along with uh, this Comic-Con thing, it's cool. 
but you know we also got to help each other lift each other up because there's a lot of bull crap i don't know if i can say that you know antonio we look at all the diversity different networks have opened up just a lot of diversity out there how does that make you feel that your show is really highlighting diversity it's amazing that our show is about i think 97 percent hispanic that's amazing i don't know if anybody else has done that but fx is really taking the leap and being very supportive and i think this show's being very successful for them so it's paying off but i think we have to you know television needs to portray society as it is it's like we've been here all these years it's not like we just appear you know people of color and, and minorities we've been here so they need to portray us on this on the screen so that we can be role models for the kids that are watching tv and then see someone who looks like them and then they can believe that they can do the same and go oh wow he came from my neighborhood maybe i can do that too so i think it's amazing you know that we we have more opportunities but that we could do more you know because we also have to tell positive stories because a lot of times they do casting of minorities but they tell the same stories over and over and over and over it's like look we're not all criminals you know we're educated we're intelligent so we have sense of humor too and we're kind of sexy right <laughs> i remember in deep space nine the final episode I always thought there would be a reboot to try to see if we can get Benjamin back from the profits. Wouldn't it be nice? I think it would be excellent. We were asked that same question on, on yesterday's panel, and the writers and creators of Deep Space Nine, they actually, in the uh, documentary, Deep Space Nine documentary, they got together in a room, and they um, uh, put together what they thought would be a synopsis for that particular episode or that particular uh, theme for a movie. I think that Deep Space Nine, um, if anything, it ended prematurely. I thought that was much more life, and I thought that we had a foundation to set. And what was beautiful about it is that a lot of people don't speak of it, but we had a black man. He was single, he was raazing a black son, and he did an excellent job. And I so wanted to be a part of that journey and so that people could see that we're people too, and we're beautiful, we're profound, and we love our children, and we love our family. I think you don't have to uh, stretch so far as the science fiction genre to find that. I do think that that is quite uh, true with uh, a lot of just African American females. I mean, from the stage when they would call us mammies, uh, we were truly there. We were the leadership in our families, but not just our families. Uh, people who were not of color looked up for us, uh, up to us, because we were raising their children. So if you can uh, uh, allow someone to be in the care of your children, you must hold a deep respect for them. It, it may not be told, but there was a lot of respect that was due us because if you can put your child in the care of someone else, you, they got a lot going on. Hey, Katie, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Always good to see you. You look stunning. What are you wearing? Thank you. It's Dolce & Gabbana. Any, any product. That's what I'm talking about. So what do we have to look forward to in next seasons of Legends? Sarah Lance getting a superpower. Should be pretty fun. And I'm directing an episode. It should be really cool. Episode 5. So how would you describe your Comic-Con experience so far? Chiller than normal. There's only three of us. Uh, usually it's like all the whole giant cast and it's been just the three of us. So it's been a little bit calmer. I miss them, but also it's been nice to just relax a bit. Yeah. Are you going to be a part of the crossover? Yes. Crossover is going to be huge this year. This is going to be the one. Now, if you can cosplay as anybody, who would you cosplay as? Batgirl. It really narrows what you can see. I'm going to talk to Ruby, see if I can borrow her costume. You look beautiful. What are you wearing? She made all the noise for us and like make us feel like <laughs> So talk about your Comic-Con experience. Let me tell you something. Comic-Con was actually always a dream of mine to come to this. Every year as it goes on, you know, you see the pictures, the videos, and you're just like, oh, I would love to just be there because, you know, I think 
I consider myself a little bit of a blurred, as I like to call it. Um, Marvel's a huge thing for me, comics and the cartoons and anime. I'm a huge anime fan. So to actually be here and to experience it and to feel the energy is so exciting and it's just a dream come true. I mean, let's just say I hope next time I come it's for my own Marvel movie. <laughs> All right. What, what would that what, what would that movie be called? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to wait and find out. Maybe a little spectrum action. Come on, let's make it happen. You know, and, you know, and talk about the fact that that we're able to to have this conversation to have yes. powerful women, women of color, being able to be major players in in the movies. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's so inspiring and it's just exhilarating to finally see this happen for us, for, our, for the culture, you know what I mean? So let's just keep making it happen, keep making that content, and keep celebrating our blackness. Pandora is a sci-fi on CW. Um, it is referential well, to some of the older sci-fi optimistic shows like Star Trek, panel, and it's basically me running around with lasers, so and you being... And me being like, no, stop following me, I'm tired of you following me. And then him being like... And then you being like... Oh, we're being unreasonable again, it's happened again. It would be called one That's not really what I do, that's a really bad, actually that's a really bad way to promote it. It's good, watch it, have a watch. Watch the show, love you guys. Before you got the role, well you're a big... Karate Kid fan? I actually knew nothing about the Karate Kid universe, I will openly admit. Um, I have learned a lot since then. Uh, I actually didn't realize what I was getting myself into. My boyfriend was like a mega fan though, so I was like, just don't make me nervous, don't make it worse. And so I told him not to tell me anything about the whole world, right? And then when I actually did get the call that I booked it, I dove deep, I binge watched all the Karate Kid movies. Since then, I think I've seen them all like five times. Now, what's your favorite line from any Karate Kid? Oh man, oh that's a tough one. I'm kind of new to um, supernatural. Okay, so it's actually this one that uh, Allie says at the competition. She's yelling and she's like, You're the best, Daniel, you're the best. And every time I see Ralph like unset doing something awesome, I like think to myself, Am I gonna say it today? And I'm like, No, no, I'll save it. <laughs> and then remember in the movie the song came on, You're the best. Yes, exactly, right? Right? Yeah. It's perfect. It's so cool. This is my first experience at Comic Con ever. I've actually never been as a guest, much less getting to be here with a show. So I am learning a lot as I go, um, but I am definitely having so much fun, and the, the fans that are here are insane, it's so cool, and then on top of that, getting to see the fans of all these things that I'm a fan of, getting to see cosplays of being really like, like, oh my god, that's from Supernatural, oh my god, that's from Avatar The Last Airbender, and I'm like figuring out, it's so cool, I love it. We're all human beings, right, and we're, I like, there's so many things, I'm already geeking out about who I'm on this carpet with, like I have had to take a deep breath, try not to cry, I'm fangirling, and I'm trying to just like act like I'm cool and I know what I'm doing, just till we get in there, once we're off the carpet, then I'm gonna go full fangirl. Hey, so this is your first Comic Con. So, what's the experience been like for you, Alexa? It's been a lot of fun, obviously. I love being in an environment surrounded by comic books. I'm such a huge comic book fan, as I'm sure many people are. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to see the actual Comic Con experience. So, if you were able to cosplay as anybody, who would you cosplay as? Oh, I'm That's really hard, but probably the, uh, Ivy uh, from, you know. Poison Ivy? Yeah, Poison Ivy. I call her Ivy. I love her outfits and her costume. I love what, she, even though she's a little evil, she's good, because, you know, everyone has a little good in them. And honestly, I think that the evil people are always the most fun to play. Look, here's your mom right here. How are you, my dear? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. It's so nice to see you again. Good to see you, too. So how's your con going? It's amazing. Today we went to, um, actually we went to a legal panel to learn all about uh, trademark and copyright protection and we learned about Super Matt. Fun. Yes, Alexa loved it. We asked some amazing like questions. You have to um, get on all the platforms and get your, your, get your handle first because that's what matters. We also went to the Friends yeah, yeah. Couch, and I love Friends, guys. Yes, we took pictures on the Friends Couch, and we met the Mouse Squad. We met like a lot of cool creators. Yeah, yeah, really fun. And also went to the pool finally, so because you need some R and R as well. So. And, and being in the industry, why is it important to take your daughter to a panel like that, knowing how the industry is? 
I think it's important to empower yourself because actually we met a superhero guy who said knowledge is the best superpower. Which and actually, true. that's what I, I think, like making children aware and making y actors and young actors and aware. Like, I want to be a businesswoman when I grow up. Yes. And I am a businesswoman right now. Right. And so just seeing all the legalness behind the acting, which I do know a little bit about because my mom like, yes. be a lawyer. Uh, it was really cool. I mean, I learned a lot more, and I really am just so excited to see all this and learn and trust all this information that I never thought I'd clean up. What's the best thing you learned at the panel? Do you want to make sure that they're not going to sell your data? Yeah, and fa yes, exactly. And what's that one face? The face app. Face app? No, because they could use your picture all around um, the world in perpetuity. So I think it's important for young kids to know that the law is something that you can also know at a young and age. And something that you should know as well. Yeah. So. yeah, I think that it's great. I mean, Netflix is letting us, you know, tell stories in a way that we've never been able to so often, especially with animated shows. It is sometimes difficult to tell a, a serialized story because you never know what order they'll air it in. We, you don't know what time slot you'll be in. And you don't know if the same people will be seeing every single episode. So to be on Netflix and to be able to, one, they give us so much freedom. And two, we get to tell this story uh, serialized in a way that can be hard to do on network TV. So it's such an honor and it's it's so much fun. And they give us so much to work with. So so I, it was a little before my time. I actually wasn't alive when the original she was coming That's out. what I was thinking. <laughs> but so I'm an adult convert to, I, I in the animation, you know, I, I work with so many fans of Masters of the Universe and they they sort of I inherited a love for it from them um, and so yeah when I when I found out that they were looking for someone to pitch Shira, I was so excited because I was like I could finally you know like uh, pay homage to this this uh, property that I've come to love as an adult so uh, so Stanley's Alliance is a trick of light is one of the most innovative and one of the last collaborations that Stan worked on during his lifetime and it's an immersive audiobook experience an audible original um, and we're going to go broad strokes. Uh, it's about two young people with extraordinary gifts whose connection with each other is extremely powerful. It's about human connection. It's about seeing past the, the tricks of light, whether they be virtual reality, augmented reality, or just what we see on our phones and on the screens, and remembering that there are humans on the other side and finding a connection with them. It's a fun yarn told with original characters developed exclusively for Audible Originals, one of Stan's uh, favorite platforms, and I think it's really exciting to be able to tell this story in an immersive medium like Audible. Yeah. Oh gosh, the, you know, there was never any other choice. We had one name on our list, and uh, we were so pleased that yeah. she was interested in doing it. She embodied um, the engagement, both on social media and just the engagement with other people and her fans, that I think Stan was looking for, and, and it's kind of the core of the story that we were telling. It's it, like Luke said. It's she. There was, and Kat said, there was truly only one. And as we told an audio, audio, audible original, we had to find somebody who really could get inside of these characters' heads and present them in a really personal way. And Yara is just delivered, over delivered. Wow, that was just an amazing event uh, to be a part of. And we just played snippets of some of the conversation that we had with the stars. We're going to be releasing uh, the whole conversations that we have with each individual uh, star because you may like one a little bit more than the other. You want to hear more that we talked about, so make sure that you definitely check that out. That's going to be a blast. All right. We're going to make like a tree and get out of here. And until next time on the Entertainment Zone, take care, folks. Stay tuned for more.